hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeve, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. No problem. No problem. Thank you very much. Welcome. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. I suppose it's better being the voice of casual boxing fans like Smido. What do you reckon Smido? Eh? <laughs> eh? Right then, let's ring uh, Ozzy Smith. Let's ring Ozzy Smith. He's uh, he's usually a, go a good uh, a good chap. I like it. I like his opinion. He tells it straight. Hello. How are you doing, Ozzy? Hi, I'm not bad. Uh, I thought we'd do a episode three of uh, Balls Deep. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, not a problem, mate, not a problem, after 12. How, how are you uh, coping with lockdown? Are you doing alright? Yeah, it's alright, I mean, we're well into it now. What is it, week 7 or 8 or something? Yeah. Um, it, it's kind of the norm, isn't it? You, mm. you get on with it. Weather's been nice, so get out when we can. Mm. Um, I mean, we're filming this today, so hopefully we'll find, well, hopefully tomorrow we'll find out an update from the, uh, the government and lockdown's eased and then people can start getting back to normal and things like that. Yeah. Have you moved out, Ozzy, yet? I haven't, no. No, it's mm. all on hold, that, but cracking on with it, there's worse things uh, happening in life at the moment. So, yeah. uh, all right. we, just, we just keep going and then uh, when it comes, it comes. Yeah. I've got some questions here, Ozzy. There's just 11 questions yeah. I've jotted down. Uh, Fury versus Mickey Theo. This is John Fury versus Mickey Theo. Does it happen, Ozzy? I thought they were going to fight in, on the 27th of April. Uh, the agent said to said that he was going to announce a venue in seven days. Now that's yeah. been a couple of weeks now, hasn't it? And there's no venue in, announced. And, and exactly, yeah. And like, it's things like who's going to put money up and stuff like that. Like mm. you, you want to, I mean, John Fury says that he doesn't need the cash and things like that. But you think this other guy's going to fight for nothing? Yeah. Um, is, is it going to be straight boxing? I mean, John Fury offered him out in Billy Joe Saunders' yard in London. Or his own garden. Ring there, is there? No. It's well, just going to be a garden, isn't it, where they'll scrap it out themselves? Or it, or it will be in uh, John Fury's back garden. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, it'll be, and it'll be, it won't be boxing. He said it'll be a proper fight. Mm -hmm. So again, being a bit pedantic, but, I mean, how, how is that realistically going to go ahead? I don't know the goalposts. Yeah. Uh, the goalposts keep getting moved, don't they? And 
I think people have got a lot of time on their hands, haven't they? Exactly, yeah, exactly. I mean, I thought the video was quite funny, actually, from John Fury. I mean, you could tell he was pissed off, uh, and he was raging. I mean, I've never seen him like that, and then he started going on comparing him about a pig, so... And it's gone, it's, I mean, it's gone viral quite quickly, and that's what John Fury does now. I mean, he's... He just does these interviews and sound bites go all over the place because he says some things that make people laugh, but they go around, you know, particularly the boxing world and elsewhere yeah. rapidly. He uh, he went on this morning with Piers Morgan, John Fury, a few weeks ago, and he said that he wanted to heal the world. And then uh, then we've got this thing that has come out a couple of days ago, and it's just totally opposites, isn't it? And what I think is going on is. I think the media are letting him hang himself, basically. That's what I think. The thing is, though, Russ, they're desperate for content as well. Yeah. Because there's no live sport and things like that. Yeah. They're desperate for stuff like this because it's it's content that you can't buy or manufacture. So it's fresh. You, you don't know what he's going to go... You don't know what he'll say. And then he goes off on something like that. The, the, the media are loving it. Yeah. Um, like... You know, like your, your IFL TVs and stuff like that. They're loving stuff like that because it, it drives them views. Yeah, I think everybody's uh, dealing with it different. I mean, Carl Froch has uh, shaved his head grade two with, with some shears. Um, Dennis Hobson has took a big razor to his head. He's got a cue ball head and a goatee. Um, and he's had a transplant, Dennis, years ago. So I'm starting to wonder... What uh, what what this lockdown is doing to people? A lot of people are doing all sorts of things, aren't they? Shaving their heads because they can't get to the barber shop. Yeah. As you say, um, I don't. I think the world will be different now, though. What well, once uh, once lockdown ends, I think a lot of things will change. Yeah. Um, I, I think it'll be. A, I don't think it'll ever get back to what it was. Uh, some things for the better, others not. Yeah. Uh, moving on then. Uh, yeah. Is Terry Harper the new Katie Taylor? Uh, probably not. Um, she, she's done well as far. Um, mm -hmm. Come up through the small old scene. Uh, look, looked after reasonably well. Uh, she's got an opportunity with Matchroom at the moment. Uh, and look, they're, they're trying to build her. Uh, they got mm. her a world title shot. Yeah. Perhaps somewhat early, uh, but they've invested in her. Mm. Uh, she came through. Uh, didn't think she had it all her own way. Yeah, she was a convincing winner. Well, she got tagged with a lot of shots. Um, yeah. And if we compare that performance to what, what Katie Taylor did against Eva Wallstrom, and I don't like triangle theories in boxing because, you know, some fighters have lost a journeyman and things like that, and it doesn't always work that EB to EB. Yeah. To, but comparing direct performances, Taylor battered Wallstrom. Um, Harper, while she was a convincing winner, did get tagged quite a bit. Mm. Uh, but, I mean, I, I don't know much about Terry Harper's uh, amateur background, but she wasn't bad from what I've read. Uh, mm. And she got to a relatively decent level and then walked away from boxing and then decided to come back. Um, is she the next Katie Taylor? Probably not. I would say that if anyone is going to be, you know, is going to rival Katie Taylor, it's probably going to be Chantel Cameron. Uh, but Katie Taylor's got the story and she's got the massive backing. Um, there's probably realistically only two other women that are relatively well known, like her. Um, Clarissa Shields being one of them, and that's because she's she's a bit of a motor mouth, and she's known for all the wrong reasons. Uh, you know, you, you see her, she calls men out and things like that. Uh, and, you know, she, she's not well liked, whereas Taylor's the complete opposite. Uh, yeah. And, you know, a lot of people like her, and then you've got Cecilia Breakhouse, who again, she's won God knows how many belts uh, in the female and she's dominated for years on end comes across very well um, now Sam with Matchroom will they look to match her and Taylor up in the future quite possibly not sure what weight it'll be because I think there is um, a few pounds difference and obviously Taylor is coming up through the weights whereas Breakers would be coming down mm -hmm. uh, so that's one to be seen but back, back to the original point of, of Harper being the new Katie Taylor no um, I think she'll beat Natasha Jonas pretty convincingly, to be honest, mm. um, when that fight does go ahead. And then look, you, 
you're at the top blend that there's and there's no real like, massive soft touches in the f- women's division anyway because there's just not the depth there so yeah. once you're at that world level it's like you know similar opponents uh, I don't think it'll be too long before we see Chantel Cameron get an opportunity whether it be against Harper or Taylor um, and for me I think she be- I think Cameron beats them both do you think that uh, Wallstrom took a lot out of Katie Taylor Boom, Wallstrom whatever her name whatever her name was that Katie Taylor got squeaked by that girl, didn't she, in New York, but everybody said she got beat, didn't they? Oh, Pursuit. Pursuit, yeah, that's it. That. Yeah, I thought she lost. Um, but look, we, we were talking about it on our podcast last week, that the amount of fighters who've, you know, have got, who've had long careers, it's very, very rare that you don't look back on the career and think, yeah, you probably lost that one, or it was very close. Um, Every other fight she's had, she's pretty much walked to Katie Taylor. Um, and I think a lot of people expected her to do the same to Pursuit, but look, Pursuit met essentially fire with fire and, and battered Taylor at times. And I, I always think, had it have been three minute rounds, that she probably could have stopped Katie Taylor as well. Yeah. Um, and for me, yeah, she, she copped a bad decision. Um, would have been nice to see the immediate rematch. Uh, I think that will try and be swerved for as long as they can to be honest because they'll try and do some things over here and obviously this situation now has t- turned the tide on boxing completely um, you don't know when you know you can start flying in people from other countries or necessarily going over to other countries uh, it limits your opponents to even smaller but what you can do for Taylor is she could she could find a winner of say um, you could do Harper Jonas winner Chantel Cameron and do the fights more in house rather than looking to go, uh, rather to go, you know, back out to America or fly somebody in like Pursuit again. Yeah. How old is Natasha Jonas now? Is she thirty six? Oh, I ain't got a clue. I know she's in her thirties. Um, and and, it, and it's one of them, isn't it? That she, it, her her being involved in boxing from a pro game probably came four years too late. Um, she's been, I think, you know, she obviously got upset against uh, oh, Vivian Obanoff, which no one really expected because we'd seen Obanoff on the scene a couple of times against Cameron and Taylor. And whilst, while she isn't, you know, like awful, but she's relatively limited, and you would expect someone like Jonas with her, you know, like Olympic background to come through. Comfortably, but she didn't, and she got stopped. Uh, and she, she got bat- absolutely battered. And naturally, then, because you haven't got that depth, I mean, what you can always do is that it's easy enough to get, you know, a quick opportunity because one win, and you, you essentially can go in for a world title because there's just not, you know, you don't need to drop back down to British level because there isn't one and yeah. things like that. Uh, I mean, she's 35. I've just looked now, so she's 35. Um, I, I think Harper which is too fresh for her. Yeah. As we say, it, it's hard to judge off some of the the earlier fights uh, in Jonas' career because the opponents were, were garbage. How old were well, Harper's do. last opponent? Uh, Walsh, she was pushing 40. You, do you think there's a problem with finding fights for these girls, Ozzy? There's just, there's just not the depth. And, and I think as, as more money goes into it, um, and it becomes more popular is not the right word, but you know, it's in the public eye more and it seemed to be good. I think you'll certainly see more coming through. Um, there's more, there's certainly more females turning over. You've obviously got, you know, the Olympics this year, which you may have seen, you know, you might see two or three more fighters turn over. That's obviously been pushed to next year. Uh, you might see fighters then decide to turn over. I think as, as, time, do, as time goes on, boxing develops more money goes into it, you see more, you might see the first all-female card, uh, you'll see more females headlining shows, I think you'll see more people turning over, but it's going to take, a, it'll be a long, long time before it's anywhere near the yeah. men's game in terms of depth, but that's because the men's game's been around for hundreds, thousands of years, so yeah. it's not, it, it, it's a struggle in comparison, but I certainly think more will become available and then the fights will improve. It's quite easy to get a world title as a female now, isn't it? After massively. It's, yeah. oh, massively. Well, that's because there's, there's no British titles. Um, mm. I think there is a Euro- I'm sure there's a European title, but it's rare you see that contested for. Because what's the point? 
Yeah. If you can win, you know, like eight or nine fights, and then in your tenth fight, challenge for the a world title because you know you, you're essentially in the rankings pretty much straight away. I mean, I've looked on box right. There ain't twenty fighters in some of the divisions. There's only two so, fighters in Chantel uh, Shannon Courtney's Shannon division, isn't there, in the yeah. UK? This is what I mean. So it, it's tough. It's tough, and there's just not the depth there. So yeah. I mean, why bother with like a Commonwealth title or something? Yeah, the great to win. But if you can get fast tracked into a world title straight away, then go for it. It's your biggest chance you're going to land, you know, a payday for yourself. And if you win, great, you're a world champion regardless of how many fights you've had. You can't, yeah. you can't take that accolade away from anybody. Uh, but yeah, it, it is a lot easier. And that's just, again, just referring back to what I said before. It's just because there's no the depth isn't there so you can just be mm. fast tracked through the system do you feel that uh, the comments by Anna Woolhouse saying it shouldn't be called women's boxing no more it should just be boxing do you think that that's a bit of an insult to the men's boxing well uh, it, that is that, that is a point that needs to be taken outside of boxing mm. um, because every sport that involves just males or just females is, is referred to, you know, it's that female women's football, women's cricket, the women's uh, cricket women's football, tennis, stuff like that. Yeah, women's tennis, which is three sets, well. not five, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of them, it, it, it's kind of the norm. Um, I understand that you know, they want it to be all, and it is one sport, you all play under the same rules, and naturally, some variations, obviously, because you've got too many rounds. Um, lesser sets in tennis, stuff like that, smaller goals playing football. But, I mean, if that's all, being brutally honest, if that's all she's got to worry about, because she wants it to be called the same name, she leads a good life. Because no one else is banging on about that, it needs to be called the same name. I've never heard that before in my life, somebody mentioning that live on Sky. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I don't really see the point. Like, it, it, it differentiates and, uh, the men's side and the women's side. It's one of them, you go in to do it, you, yeah. you're going to do it, and I, I don't see that changing, to be honest. And again, it's not bothering anybody. Mm. It's not bothering anybody. Yeah. Uh, moving on then, uh, from women's boxing. We wish Terry Harper all the best. Keep flying the flag, Terry, for Doncaster. Now, moving on, what next for Kel Brook and Amir Khan? What next for them? Where do they go now? Uh, I'll start with Khan. Uh, wouldn't be shocked if he retired to be honest I think the lockdown and you know like the postponement of boxing has come at essentially quite a, a bad time for him um, time's ticking with Khan anyway uh, I think he's obviously coming off a loss uh, oh no sorry he's coming off a win isn't he out in Saudi against Billy Dib which yeah. again was a bit of a farce to be honest because yeah. we know uh, Dib was tiny compared to him uh, prior to that, he obviously got stopped at Terence Crawford. I mean, what's left for Amir Khan? He's only going to take the big fights. He's not going to, you know, do a rebuilding thing from where he'll have a couple more gimmies type of thing and get him, throw himself into another big fight. He's earned his money. He's had a brilliant career. I'd like to see him walk away before he gets to, you know, he does any more damage to himself. Um, look, I, I don't know his financial situation, but on paper, he's earned extremely well. He's a millionaire, you know, I think massive. he needs more cash. No, it's uh, loads of people. Some fighters do keep going because they constantly need to. They do need to keep earning. Yeah. But for Khan, he, he seems like he does have his head switched on amongst everything. Uh, and from a finance perspective, he's fine. So I'd like to see him walk away. To be honest, uh, I'm not interested in seeing the Kelbrook fight that passed its sell by date years ago. Now, um, obviously, a shame it couldn't be made. But it's not the first fight that's not been made that everybody's disappointed, uh, and it won't be the last either. As for, as for Kel Brook, um, where does he go? Um, I mean, is he going to go? To, is he going to stay at one four seven? Is he going to go up to one fifty four? Who knows? Um, I'd actually like to see the Liam Smith fight. If he, I mean, Brook bangs on about how you know he wants a world title shot, but he doesn't deserve a world title shot at the moment unless he goes out somewhere and he's on the short end of a deal and he's taking it as an opportunity, but he doesn't want that. It's why the, the Khan fight never happened, because he constantly priced himself out. I remember Hearn saying that a deal was agreed, and then I think Kel Brook's dad came back and scuppered it again, because he found out what Amir Khan was earning. Yeah. But I always think if you're happy with your purse, it doesn't matter. Mm. So 
if, if we had a virus and I was getting, what, 10 million quid, I wouldn't give a toss what you were earning. Because if I'm happy with 10 million, then that suits me and I can lead a nice life after that. And Brooke was always adamant he'd win. So just think, you get 10 million, you beat him, you could go and double your next purse. Um, so I, I don't know what he's going to do, to be honest. I mean, like I said, I'd like to see the Liam Smith fight. I think it'd be a great fight, that decent clash of styles. And I'd favour Smith, to be honest. Uh, other people will disagree, that's fine. Um, I, but I don't think Smith is a, is that bad. I think he's a solid, I mean, yeah, you got to give me as a world title. He's shot. a solid Euro level guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's a solid European level, and will push, you know, some like, and, and he, could, he could beat the fringe world level guys, to be honest. Mm. I mean, you look at his, I mean, you look at Liam Smith's record, it's not horrendously bad from a perspective, he, he does, he cleaned up at domestic level, and then he went immediately to um, world title level, and I think it's one of those from where he perhaps missed, you know, just a bit of an opportunity, you know, a couple of solid European wins, which I always say I'm a big fan of the traditional route. And I think those yeah. European level wins and picking up the European title can assist you then when you make the next step up, going to world level. Because then you've had, you know, those tougher tests against the more schooled fighters and things like that. Um, but, but, for, but he's clearly not interested in that happening. Brooks said that, oh, I don't want that, that this isn't going to happen and things like that. And I'm like, well, well, why? Why that? That's a decent domestic fight, that. But he said he wants the big ones. He's calling out Terence Crawford, people like that. Will those happen? Probably not. Uh, I still think he'll fight. Uh, I know he's been training and he's kept the weight off. It's like the penny's finally dropped. Who will see him against next? I think you'll probably see him in another couple of gimmies now. Um, just to keep himself active and then try and get him a fighter and it'll probably be in America um, I don't think we'll see him get a world title shot over here again unless you know it's uh, an opportunity a random opportunity presents itself alright then <clears throat> moving on then what do you think to uh, Liam Liam Williams as career since he's gone to Dominic Ingle well he's gone from strength to strength yeah. you, you cannot fault the guy he's been excellent um, a move away from Wales has clearly assisted him. He's freshened it up with Dominic Ingle and look, he's, he's hot property at the moment. A lot yeah. of people are talking about him. Uh, manager challenger for Demetrius Andrade's title. Can he win that fight? Of course he can. Yeah, he can. Never really been impressed by Andrade at all. Um, bags of talent, but again, rarely impresses. Uh, whereas Williams, he, he's flying high, confidence is high, he's punching hard, he can box. Um, I, I always felt that in the first fight against Liam Smith, had it not been for that cut, he would have gone on to win that fight. He was well ahead. And I think the second rematch from memory, I was at that fight um, up in Newcastle, and I'm sure I scored it to Williams. Um, not by much, but relatively close. Yeah. Um, and the cards were, I thought, were quite poor, actually. Um, and it was a lot closer than the card suggested, but I scored it to Williams, and I know a few other people around me did as well. But look, he, he came back, he went up to middleweight, um, got an opportunity against Mark Efron, went in as the opponent as well. People yeah. will forget that. He went in as the opponent. I had Mark Efron to beat him, didn't I? Yeah, I had Efron to beat him as well. Because from what you'd seen of Williams, and from what you'd seen of Efron at the time, whilst the levels of opponent have been different, Efron was blasting people out. Yeah. And on paper, we'd seen Williams lose twice, and I, I've seen a lot of Heffron, I um, know a lot of people up here who know him and seen him in the gym and stuff, and they felt he'd just done too much for Williams, and while well, Williams completely upset the apple cart, battered Heffron, absolutely battered him. Um, went on from that, um, I'm a Joe Mullinger as well, that, that was a mismatch, and ended in a brutal KO, um, and then he's had a couple of... Um, Foreign opponents as well, the last one being against the Atlantis Fox, which was billed as an eliminator for the WBO, but wasn't. Um, he, he hammered Fox as well, but I know he's ended up getting him in the number one spot. And as a manager challenger, yes, he'll probably have to go out to America for it, um, get a nice big payday off that own money. Um, when that'll happen, we obviously don't know. But for Williams, I think he's got every chance of beating Andre, and it'll be a massive coup for Frank Warren. Because he stood by him. Um, I'd like to see Frank Warren build him in Wales. Uh, he was doing that uh, before the Smith fights. And 
Williams was selling loads of tickets, pretty much selling out arenas down in Wales. So go and do it. Go and build yourself a ticket seller at home. And if you can go and win, you know, a world title, you've got an area which you can tap into. I know Matt Trim yeah. are going back. But go and do it with Williams. I mean, Matt Trim are topping with Lee Selby. Liam Williams is, while Selby's won a world title, William, more people know Liam Williams. Yeah. Liam Williams sells more tickets. Go and put your stamp on the area and make it yours. It, it's simple stuff, and I just don't get why promoters don't do it sometimes. Build fighters in the hometown or cities yeah. and let the fans flock to them. Yeah. Then when you do have to move on to the bigger arenas and stuff, they're going to bring the following with them rather than moving them around the country like you would with a young prospect, getting them out in the limelight. But then when it comes to tr- when trying to sell tickets back in wherever, Derby, Cardiff, surely... No one knows who they are, and then you're just relying on your your hardcore ticket sellers that have followed you, probably a, a bit as an amateur, and then as an early pro as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, and we obviously argue Dominic Ingle some stick, don't we? But we have to give him credit, don't we, for what he's done with Ingle's done a good job. Ingle's done a good job with him. Yeah. Um, he, look, look, he knows his stuff. Um, obviously, people have got their opinions on him. But you can only judge off what he's done with Liam Williams. He did a good job with Billy Joe Saunders. Um, and for Williams, he, he's one of them from where... I don't always agree with changing trainers. I think some fighters see it as, I'll get beat and then I'll move on straight away. Um, but Liam Williams needed a change. He's done it the right way. He's not just, you know, gone to somewhere else in Wales or somewhere like that. He's moved, he's moved himself out of his comfort zone. Moved himself, moved himself away from his little girl. He's living the life, and he's reaping the rewards now. And all the best to him when the fight with Andrade does go ahead, because I hope he wins. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. All right, then moving on. Then does Dave Allen win a British title, and what next for the White Rhino? Um, does he win a British title? Probably not. Not in my opinion. No. Um, I, I just, I, I think. He's taken too much punishment already. Um, there is quality at British level at the moment. Obviously, you've got Dubois holding that belt. Um, he's certainly not going to relinquish that until potentially after the Joyce fight. Um, and that's if he wins. If he loses, you're going to have Joyce as a champion anyway. Yes, he might well chuck that belt away because Joyce has got... He's been. He's trying to be fast-tracked to you know, a world title shot or into a massive fight with one of the, uh, the bigger names in the division. And then even if you do make it vacant, it's going to be it's difficult to see who do you think Alan beats. Uh, I mean, Huey Fury, I, I, will he linger around a British title level? Not too sure. Mm. You've got David Price, who is probably going to make another comeback um, after getting beat off Chisora. But Price around British level will be potentially a dangerous opponent for anybody. And we saw what he did to Alan. Yeah. He, he, he battered him, he beat him up. Uh, Nathan Gorman is going to come back. Gorman's a good fighter. Um, just didn't execute the right game plan against Dubois on the night. But has still got skills. Slick boxer, can punch. Um, I would take him over Alan. Uh, you've got, obviously, Nick Webb. He won that Ultimate Boxer tournament. So he's flying high. Fabio Wardley. I think he's looked after by... I think he's looked after by Dillian White, actually. Dillian White, yeah. So there's an opportunity. I think he's contesting for the English title. So naturally, the next move after that, if he wins, he's going to be for the British title as well. Um, and then you've got Cash Alley, Dennis's guy. Um, mm. Obviously, he's, he's well known for biting David Price. And he was in that fight with Price as well. Price was starting to tire. You forget that. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I mean, yes, you've got a couple of people coming through, um, some of the lesser names. So... Look, can, can they get an opportunity from where it presents itself with a, a lesser opponent? Quite possibly. But do you ever trust Alan to really turn up and things like that? I mean, I backed against him a couple of times and he's upset the apple cart and then I, I finally picked him to win and he gets battered off David Price. So we'll wait and see. He's on with another trainer now. Um, they've obviously not really met because I think he joined when it was the lockdown and things like that. Um, he's got a new management set up with MTK, so they're looking after him from that side. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. He's he's an unpredictable character. Um, seen online, he's lo- he's you know he's trying to get himself in shape. Fair play to him. He's making the most of you know a lockdown, yeah. a quiet time. He, he's trimming down now, and if when things do are relaxed and he can hit the ground running, 
Um, who knows what we'll see. I think he's a while off a British title shot yet. Um, he obviously needs to get some wins, but blasting out, you know, like these, there's only so many times you can blast out these, you know, these journeymen coming over, and you don't learn anything from it. I understand, you know, if you've had 12, 15 months out, you want to just get a bit of ring rust off, but then doing two, three, four of them in a row, and then you do a massive step up, it just doesn't work. Yeah. So we'll wait and see with him, but for me, I, I think he'll fall short in coming there. Um, for a British title, but I wouldn't be shocked if he could win, say, a Commonwealth title, because we saw, in reality, Lenroy Thomas was picked so he could get beat, yeah. and Alan would have won a Commonwealth title. He just didn't turn up. But in reality, if you can find somebody like, say, Ebenezer Tete, who Dubois blasted out, or that Richard Larty, again, Dubois blasted him out, they'd be eligible for Commonwealth title shots. And you would suspect Alan would be would have enough to be particularly Tete. Uh, Larty showed a bit more, and he can crack a little bit, and he has a chin. Uh, but again, you would have to favour Alan in the fight yeah. of Larty as well. But, but we'll wait and see. But British title, no Commonwealth title, quite possibly. Uh, Carl Froch had Dave Allen beating Lenroy Thomas by seven rounds on the Sky Scorecard. Yeah, well, that's an awful card. That's abysmal. I think even Alan admitted he got beat. Did he? Against uh, mm. Thomas, yeah. That's a bad card. Seven rounds? No way. That's what I've just watched it just now this morning, I think. I've just watched it just now. His scorecard came up for seven rounds. Yeah. Well, I disagree with that one. Mm. Um, it was certainly close, don't get me wrong. But yeah. there's not a chance either fighter won it by seven rounds. That's why Carl Froch is not a judge. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what is going on with the IFL content of lately, or, or of late, or with all these compilations and? Oh, I, I don't know, um, but you, you can just—I I think everyone can see it from themselves in the views. The views are not what they're at because nobody cares about watching reruns, you know, of old best bits and things like that, of best bits of whatever fighter and stuff. Because what's the point? Like. They are they are the biggest boxing online platform probably in the world. They've got a huge backing and can pretty much access whatever fighter they want. They've got good relationships with near enough every promoter. And then for the first few weeks, I'm seeing shit like whatever best bits of Dave Allen or press conference reruns and stuff like that. I'm thinking, no one cares. Like, what, what is going on? Um, I mean, with our pod, I mean, we're looking at the moment because there's not really a lot to talk about. So we're getting two guests on a week. Now, I mean, if, look, a, a podcast that costs nothing to run and things like that and has no backing whatsoever can go and get two guests on. Yeah, they might not be, you know, like all the huge, you know, like world world champion names. But we had, we had Andy Lee on, John Ryder. Boxing is the best sport for access to fighters, yeah. promoters, managers, whoever you want, pick up the phone and nine times out of ten, they'll get back to you and they will speak to you. Because it's give and take. Mm. If you want to remember, boxing's all about a profile as well. And if you have a big profile, people will watch you, people will buy tickets. So yeah. if more people see you, they're going to be willing to talk as well. Um, so look, we, we, have, we have no issues getting guests on. And so I'm just looking at the content now and finally it looks like that they're certainly doing they're interviewing people, which is what they should have done ages ago. Um, but I tell you, people, people cottoned on to it and they got found out and people were calling them out, literally saying like, what you've just said, what is going on? Mm. Uh, anyway, I mean, look, they're, they're, doing, they're doing like interviews now over uh, Skype and things like that and Zoom. Uh, and fair play, I've, I've not watched any of it, but I'm just looking now and they've got some good people on there, some good content. Uh, and, and that's what they should have been doing because as I say they can, they can access pretty much any fighter and cherry pick any fighter they want yeah. and it just took them what three or four weeks to cotton on what they should be doing uh, and that's after realistically I think Boxing Social started doing it as well so they were reactive rather than being proactive yeah good points made there I'll say Oara Davis versus Anthony the Machine Fowler is it a good fight and at what weight would I mean, meaning what weight would be safe to do it? Because one's saying he's, he's a middleweight, the other's saying he's a welter. Um, it's not. 
it's not a good sight for me whatsoever. No. Um, it's intense beef, isn't it, on D- IFL? Yeah, look, D- D- Davis was he's at one forty. Yeah, basically, Davis is yeah. At 140. And Fowler's at 154, but he's not a small 154 either. No, he's one of about... 14 pound difference. Already. And he fought at, uh, well, he fought at middleweight as well, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. He, I think he's won a couple of like, fringe titles at middleweight as well. So look, um, it, it's not a fight I want to see. A Fowler would win. Sheer size, mm. but boxing ability as well. We've seen Davis out box quite a few times. And one thing Fowler's got is a chin. So if you negate Davis' power, he ain't really got much left. Um, but it's not a fight I want to see. Again, it's just referring back to the first question with John Fury and that bloke. It's just, it's just intense fake Twitter beef. <laughs> it's, been, it's being doled up because there's nothing else happening. You, mm. You're telling me prior to this, no one wanted to see O'Hara Davis Anthony Fowler. It wasn't on the lips of anybody. Oh, this would be a good fight. Why don't we see this? Mm. It was never mentioned because there's 14 pound difference between them. Yeah. No, because you know they've had a bit of a, t- a spat online. Everyone's thinking, people are saying, you know, like from the powers that be. Oh, yeah, this this might be a good fight. We could look at doing that. Mm. We well, fucking shouldn't, because no one cares about it. Mm. Leaving to it, playing around on the Sky videos, calling each other out and videoing himself. Leaving to it, because no one cares about it. And, and as you says, I, I, it's dangerous. I mean, unless you can find it, what what would the correct weight be? What it be is one four seven. Do you think that Eddie Earns played... Can, yeah, can Fowler honestly boil down to 147? No. He makes 154 well, but that's because his diet and everything is spot on. Mm. But you look at him, there's barely, there's nothing on, nothing to him then. You try and take another seven pound off him, it'd be a corpse getting on the scales. Like these, you know, you see these MMA fighters literally being assisted up like the frail old women getting on scales because they can't stand because they've drained that much weight out of them. It just, it just, it'd be dangerous. Um, and naturally, if Davis can put seven pound on, he can weigh in at one four three or something like that. Um, he's, he's at the welterweight. He's under the welterweight limit. Then it doesn't matter. Yeah. But for Fowler coming down, it'd be difficult. But it's not a fight I want to see. Um, look, you'll always have some goonies who want to watch it. Uh, but for me, I'm interested. Fowler, Fowler's got. Fowler has his own business at one fifty four, and Davis is in this. Is in that golden contract tournament, and look if he beat if he beats Tyrone McKenna, which I think he will do. Um, I do. You think his first fight under a promoter is going to be against Anthony Fowler? Is it Egg? No. Do you think that uh, Eddie Earns playing God with these fighters and weights and stuff like that? You know, trying to create stir it up and get intense beef and get people talking. Do you think that? I mean, we're looking. He's, we're go- he's trying to. He's trying to get potential fights in motion whilst nothing's happening get a bit of beef get a bit of you know as we say videos being exchanged doing online like video calls with them both and he's trying to get some publicity around things that shouldn't be getting publicity and look a bit of it's worked at the moment but it's all right getting it at the moment because nothing's happening but as lockdown measures ease and things like that we're going to see more stuff returning football's going to be back in the frame maybe a bit of cricket other sports and stuff like that so this thing won't work um, but yeah he's trying to he's, he's doing his job look he's a promoter and he's mm. trying to promote things and get publicity behind things that might necessarily not at the moment it's fine but in reality when it comes to making these things I don't see it bearing any effect whatsoever do you think that uh, lessons have not been learned from Kel Brook moving up 13 pound now, O'Hara's a 140, Fowler's a 154, so that would be £14 difference. Do you think lessons have not been learned from the Kell Brook disaster with Golovkin? Well, I'll talk about that if it happens. I mean, look, it, it's a bit different. I mean, we're talking about two guys that are around British level and Brook, mm. who was, um, what was he? Well, he was, the, he was the IBF champion at the time as well, yeah. wasn't he? So he was yeah. the 147 champion and then he went up to... I'm sure he was the champion. Then yeah, he was IBF yeah, champion. Yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah, because he came back and then fought Errol Spence as his yeah. mandatory. Yeah. Um, and then went up to and went up to 160. And look, we're talking probably about tens of thousands being on the line, whereas millions were on the line. Um, but ultimately, if you, if you strip it all down and the two weight issues, it's quite similar. Of course it is. Um, and, and look, there's arguments that Golovkin, whilst, yeah, 
yeah, Brooke might have had flashes of de- you know decency with his speed and stuff like that, and he, he landed shots on Golovkin. But Golovkin shattered his bloody eye socket, and there's an argument that look that it took so much out of Brooke that that he'll never be the same fighter again. Yeah. Um, and you don't want to see that. I'm all for you know potential catchweights between similar level fighters that people want to see, for example. Um, you know, and I'm not talking you know about stupid catchweights here. I'm talking you know, you know, a, a fair one. But, yeah. But this one wouldn't be fair. I mean, you'd have one guy boiling down to him at 147, and I don't even think he'd be able to make it. And you'd have one guy coming up from 140, and I don't think he's a particularly massive. Um, 140 either no. going up to uh, potentially 147 which he used to campaign at and came down because he said he wasn't big enough for that and mm. now look whilst Fowler's going to take the weight off you don't lose that frame in your sheer size and strength and look he'll put it back on I saw Fowler put on a comment and he'd be pushing 170 in the ring mm. that's just that is dangerous yeah. that is dangerous he, he's a, you know he's pushing a light heavyweight limit there that is dangerous it's all right you know putting the weight on when you're against another 154 who again has the same you know will put weight on and might get up to like 168 or something um mm. things like that but not against uh, a career like welterweight let me just let me just tell you this carl frotch is 171 172 in the ring on fight night so if fowler's 170 he's a big light middle exactly yeah yeah massively massively so it, look, it's just it's a fight that shouldn't happen. It shouldn't be sanctioned. Um, nobody wants to see it anyway. Like I said, it's all right putting up a few videos and people are watching because they have nothing else to do at the moment. Mm. But you try and make that outside the ring, outside when it's back to normal. Don't see it happening. Uh, let me just throw a curveball at you here. Kelbrook against Golovkin, welterweight champion against middleweight champion. Yeah. Paulie Malignaggi against Golovkin because he held a belt at welterweight when Golovkin were the champion what would <clears> people say if that fight were made oh it, w- it would have been it would have been laughed off and mocked um, but I mean you don't know what a lot of people I mean the one thing that you got is that obviously Khan had done it against Canelo and went up and that was completely out of the blue that, but that wasn't as big a jump from a perspective that I think Khan was up at 153 and Canelo was at like 155 yeah um, so in terms of like the weight comparisons and stuff, and look, you could, Canelo started off at one four seven. I mean, I think he's operating at well above his weight already. Yeah. I'd say naturally he's probably a career one fifty four, mm-hmm. and I think he could still make that. Um, and then even then at one sixty, he's not massive. You know, you don't look at him and think, bloody hell, he's a big one sixty. He needs to move mm. up to one six eight. Yeah. You don't look at him like that whatsoever. Um, whereas Khan has always been, you know, naturally won a lot at 140, he came up to 147, done extremely well there. Uh, but yeah, going to, from Malinagi and stuff, it, you just laugh at it. It, it would be laughed off and it, it would be mocked. In, in reality, yeah. it would be mocked. But yeah. Brooke had the profile at the time and the hype and the promotional outfit behind him from where people kind of bypassed that. And it was very much, you know, Golov, you know they, built, they played on the fact that Golovkin was struggling to get opponents. Uh, Brooke was also struggling to get the fights he wanted and then he, Kelbrook, you know, like he dared to dream and went on to take on, you know, the undefeated animal type of thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's what it was built on. And look, and look, there was a lot of, you know, it, it was a big fight. You, you can't deny that. Um, Throwing in the crowds, a big pay-per-view and stuff like that. Uh, and I think it was received extremely well across across the world. Naturally, some people have their own disapprovals of it because of the, the weight difference and stuff like that. And I think you only saw, you know, like the clowns at Sky picking Brooke to win. And, Johnny know, Nelson. The, you, you know, the fanboys and stuff like that. And, and that was purely because they probably, A, didn't know a lot about Golovkin, and B, we'll just pick anybody that is shown on Sky for and think, yeah, they're going to win this, they're going to win this. But in reality, it was a complete mismatch, and that's what it was. And that's what it presented itself as. Yeah. Uh, moving on then. Uh, Devin Haney came out with with something, a racist comment or something that's deemed racist. Oh, yeah, he'll never get beat off a oh, white man. Or a white man. Like Eddie yeah. Hearn did nothing about it, but O'Hara Davis had beef with Tommy Coyle and he said he'd beat him up and then do an interview in The Sun and he was thrown yeah. under a bus. What? Why, why do you think 
Devin Haney's not being punished and how Ara Davis was? Well, I mean, look, D- Davis had, had been, had had his problems already before it. Um, I think he'd ruffled a few feathers. The incident with Coyle was bang out of order and, and that was completely blown out of proportion, wrongfully. And I felt for Ara Davis on that because he didn't do anything wrong. And look, he came out himself and said, I was told to put this by my management team. Mm. Now, the Sims are extremely close with the Hearns, so you, you're not telling me that th- this was certainly constructed because he wanted to build a fight between O'Hara Davis and Tommy Coyle. Yeah. Um, and that, that wasn't fair. For the Haney situation, look, it's all about value. Haney is a world champion at the moment. He's been awarded his title again via an email off the WBC, so he's a world champion. Um, and look, what are you going to do? reprimand him bollock him you don't know what's going on behind the scenes he's kind of just been forgotten about really um, a lot of people have disagreed with it some people have said like who cares it's just uh, you know he wasn't he didn't mean anything you know massively you know insulting by it. it's just one of those type of passing comments for me I, I don't really have an opinion to be honest uh, the reason why he's probably not been punished is because he's got value to the promotional company yeah and, and what he said, they can, there's ways they can spin around it and pass it off that Loki. He, he was incorrect in what he said, but he didn't mean anything by it, and he's learned from his mistakes. But ultimately, they're not going to discard a talented world champion uh, for a, a passing comment like that. Whereas Davis, how far was he going to get realistically? Yeah. Not very far. Yeah. I rate O'Hara oh, Davis. I think he'd have to yeah, be much. Sorry, and, and by that, I'm not shooting him down, by the way. Yeah. I mean, look, if, if you can win an area title. Well, that's the level you get to. You have exceeded at the level that you perform at, basically, and good on you. Um, some people turn over one just to have a pro fight. Or some fighters go on the road. Mm. Others want to win as many belts as they can. And if your level is the British title, that's a brilliant achievement. And not many fighters win British titles. Look, it's seen as, you know, like everyone can do it. But it's not true whatsoever. No. And if you only win a British title, then fair play to you. Curtis Woodhouse won one. If you get to a European level, fair play to you as well. Curtis uh, Woodhouse. Every fighter's going to win a world title. Um, and again, they're, they are, I mean, I know there's a lot of them knocking around in terms of like different versions and yeah. levels of a world title. But your, pro- your proper world titles, you know, your IBF, WBO, WBC, WBA, the fighters are few and far between winning them. Um, yeah. So I, I applaud any fighter that gets to their level and wins, you know, wins a title and and fair play to him and certainly when I said that he won't go as far I mean that he probably never expected Davis to get to you know knocking on the door of world level and going blasting people out up there whereas Haney he's, he's shown that he can operate at that world level already and there's, he's more valuable to him at the moment yeah uh, Curtis Woodhouse won a British title by the way mm. and yeah. that's a great and achievement he, isn't it look, look when he turned over as well he was a laughing stock. Mm. I read his book, yeah. um, and he said that look, he, he wasn't accepted at first, and he had to prove his worth. Um, and, and he always felt that had he have taken boxing younger when he did when he was a footballer, for example, and he, he wasn't a footballer, and he you know he had the you know the pe- amateur pedigree and like, yeah. his mentality and stuff, he felt he could have gone on further. But what an achievement for someone like him. That's what I mean. You have got you can't look at the Woodhouse story and not applaud it. Yeah. You know, I was a pro footballer 10 years before, playing mm. at the top level, never picked up a pair of boxing gloves unless, you know, it was like, uh, you know, like one of these fitness sessions, taking them, not taking them in, but, you know, like you hit pads and like a bit mm. of a, a box fit session. Yeah. 10 years down the line, he's beating established pros. Um, and there's an argument, Curtis Woodhouse beat Frankie Gavin as well. Now, what, what an upset that mm. would have been. And he didn't get it on the cards. But people watch the fight back and you look at the reports and there's a lot of people that felt would I speak Frankie Gavin. Yeah. I remember when he fought Dale Miles is stuck is it was it Dale Miles? Dale Ma- Dale he stuck nut on him and um, went up running rounds. Oh, he was a rough I fighter. Mean, I, I know what you mean. Um well to wait guy from Wales. Yeah, I think he lost against him though. It was what, sorry? I think I think Curtis lost against him, but I were there and he nutted him. Oh, Dale Evans. <laughs> Dale Evans, is it Dale, Dale Evans? Evans? That was it, yeah, Dale Evans, that was it, yeah. yeah. He, he nutted him. Curtis, he won at, won at rounds, he stuck, dropped nut on him, and he went back to the corner, the guy, 
and he was sat there and he went, he just fucking nutted me. <laughs> I didn't know that. He was ro rough. He got knocked out, what it was, didn't it? Yeah, but he, he, Curtis were rough. He used to go, yeah, come yeah, in yeah. close with his head and give him, you know, rough him up and that. And he had a bit of a rough house style, didn't he, on it, about him? Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. But he likes to tear up down Driffield, old Curtis on a night out. Oh yeah. Uh, moving on then, Fury versus AJ, China, Saudi, or Wembley or Old Trafford? Um, I think the lockdown may well um, potentially ensure that this fight goes on in the UK now. Yeah. Because look, they'll want this fight to happen sooner rather than later. And it, regardless of what anybody says, there's going to be a crowd in there. Whether, whatever country it's in, they're going to want to sell tickets because yeah. it will sell out. But depending on what your restrictions are, some countries might not allow you know um, people from other countries to fly in for for months, maybe twelve months. Yeah. So we just change this battery, Ozzy. Two secs. Two secs. Oh yeah, go on, Ozzy. You what you've been on about with Joshua? Yeah, Saudi. So, yeah. So for all the for the what's it called from the perspective of lockdown it's probably the best chance it'll happen of happening in the UK because they'll want to sell tickets and other countries might not allow you know might not want a lot of people flying over um, following all everything that's happened with the virus um, they're going to want to sell tickets it will sell out there's no um, you'd be a fool if you'd think otherwise I'd love to see it happen in the UK but ultimately it will it could go where the money is so if the Saudis decide to put up whatever 400 million or something like that they're going to go there because look it's going to be difficult like the UK can only offer X amount and then if you've got you know like wealthy Saudis coming over and saying I'm going to put this in then it's difficult and if you put like you know if you put 100 million in front of you and 15 million in front of you you're going to take the 100 million aren't you because yeah. you're going to see it and you think bloody hell that can be mine that can be mine and I'm going to take the most uh, I'd love to see it from a, from a UK boxing man. I'd love to see it happen in the UK. I think everybody would. Um, look, you, you, it could probably it probably do hundred thousand tickets. Being brutally yeah. honest, uh, it wouldn't be a shock that everyone would want to go to it. Uh, it'd be one of the it'd be one of the biggest fights in British boxing history. Uh, I just hope. It, I'd love to see it happen in the UK, but. Saudi Arabia wouldn't shock me. The only way it doesn't happen in the likes of Saudi or China is if one of the fighters says, I am not fighting there because I don't want to. Yeah. That's the only way that's the only way it will not go to one of those countries. So you'd probably say that look, Saudi, America America's a genuine chance of it happening. Um that that's probably up there. I'd probably put America America, UK, Saudi as your three options. UK probably at the bottom of the pile, um, but look, we'll wait and see. F fingers crossed. This lockdown means that they're kind of restricted on where they can go, and the UK becomes uh, the only viable option. But like I said, they'll get loads of people in there. Um, they'll only do it when everything is back to normal, so they can cram the crowd in. Uh, and then f fingers fingers crossed it does happen. It's all right us talking about where it'll happen. Fingers crossed it does happen because that's what we all want to see. Yeah. We want to see all the belts on the line between arguably the two best heavyweights in the world. Yeah, yeah, that's what we want to see. Do you think that Eddie Hearn might be sweating if he has to take the pool left fight and he can't get any step aside sorted? Pieces. I think he's old now. Um, I think he'll he'll take shots, and I just don't think he'll withstand Joshua's like onslaught type of thing. He's in his fortieth so, year, has he? Sorry. He's in his fortieth year. Yeah, that's what I mean. And look, he's no mug and stuff like that. I just I just think Joshua's better than him. Do you think um, that Joshua's been? Do you think Joshua's had a protected career where he's been carefully matched? Yeah. Of course you do it. Because 
you might have waited, say, for the right opportunity, but then you're coming up against, like, a Vladimir Klitschko or Tyson Fury or Deontay Wilder. Now, to win your world title, who do you want to beat? Who would you rather face in reality? Tyson Fury or Charles Martin? You're going to take the Charles Martin fight. I've nothing against that. And yes, he had some, you know, like, your Eric Molina and stuff like that. It wasn't the best of, you know, it was a poor defence. Um, but it's another story going into rankings and, and things like that. But what you can't disagree with him on, look, is that he's fought, he may not have fought the fighters in the prime, like your Povetkins and things like that, but he's fought pretty much everybody presented to him, bar Fury and bar Wilder. And the Fury fight has never really presented itself. You've, you've never, you know, we've been close to having an agreement. The Wilder fight more so, and, and I've always said I don't think they fancied the Wilder fight. No. I would take Wilder now to beat Joshua. Personally, would you? Um, yeah, I, 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 look, Tyson Fury showed how to beat Deontay Wilder, but Tyson Fury, six foot nine, can move like a light heavyweight and things like that. He, he's unreal, he's a freak of nature. Anthony Joshua couldn't do um, what to Deontay Wilder, what Tyson Fury did, because they're completely different fighters. And mm-hmm. I don't th- and you've got to remember, Fury took some shots in that second fight, and, and he took them. He took the shots. He said himself that, look, Wilder caught me and it bloody hurt. And Wilder's never going to lose that power. He's never going to get really any better. But I just wouldn't back Joshua to uh, to last 12 rounds without getting caught. I mean, we saw him against Ruiz and he was very coy and on the back foot. Mm. Uh, but he boxed to win and he did that. Um, Wilder would be a different gravy and I, I think Wilder would be... Look, Wilder might think, no, I, I've been beaten now. I have nothing to lose. You might see a better Deontay Wilder next. I don't think he'll ever beat Tyson Fury. I just think Fury, I, but I don't think anybody will beat Fury in this division. Um, but yeah. Wilder against Joshua, I, I would say Wilder tomorrow, without yeah. a doubt. And I, I just don't, I don't think Joshua's chink will stand up to Wilder's power. Other people will disagree and think Joshua will just steamroll for Wilder and things like that. But Wilder's got a chin. He can take shots. Yes, he's been buzzed and stuff like that, but you're going to be buzzed. You're getting hit off a bloke who's like 18 and a half, 19 stone. It's going to hurt. Um, but, but it's one of them that I, I, susp- I would take Wilder at the moment. I don't think Wild. I think Wilder's still got plenty to offer. Um, he's certainly in the top three heavyweights in the world at the moment because if you start going down the record, you're back into being pretty much all of them. Yeah. Uh, being honest, like Chisora and stuff like that. And, and, and why I think I think Wilder would obliterate Dillian White. He would obliterate him. Yeah. And I think it'd be early as well. Dillian um, White's there to be hit, isn't he? Exactly, exactly. And the one thing you don't want to be when you're against Deontay Wilder is a static target there to be hit. Because look, we saw when Fury got caught in the first fight. What happened when he stayed in the pocket too long? He got caught and he fell on his arse. First, the first knockdown wasn't a heavy knockdown, but the second one, I still to this day don't know how he got up. I showed that Fury, yeah, his, his powers of recovery are excellent, and he can't take a shot because when he got back up, his legs were there. Yeah. So yeah, he might be, he, he's being caught and things like that, but his powers of recovery have been excellent. Mm. So yeah, so back to uh, from from Wilder perspective, he, he, I still think he's got a lot to offer. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I mean. I don't know what's going to happen next because I think with everything that's gone on the mat, they might try and pay step aside money. But the step aside money in itself is probably purses for a fight, isn't it? It'll be paying Pool Evan Wilder, and it'll be, it won't be you know, like a few hundred k either. It'll be millions they want because they're going to miss out on a fortune themselves. Do you think that uh, move, moving on from that then, from the Fury AJ Wilder triangle, do you think that Dillian White? He's like the fourth love child in that, isn't he? Do you think that Dillian White's now missed the boat? Um, uh, for a world title well, shot? No, he's not missed the boat because he's a mandatory challenger to Tyson Fury and I think that kicks in something like this time next year. February. So he's not missed the boat. He hasn't missed the boat on that perspective. Um, and look, he's kept himself active. He's just been built as, you know, like this phenomenon and things like that by Matrim that you know he's warrants all these talent people forget Dillian White turned down a final eliminator against Kubrat Pulev because it was in Bulgaria people forget that mm-hmm. he had an opportunity and if he beat if he'd have beaten Pulev he'd have been in the position that Pulev's in yeah fighting for a world title 
he turned it down. He turned down a rematch with Joshua. Yeah, at Wembley. With, at Wembley. For all when belts. Andy Ruiz got the opportunity out in America. He turned yeah. that down because he wanted more time. Ortiz. Ortiz, he turned down another eliminator with Luis Ortiz. Money's not there. Twice, that was. Yeah, so it's like, you want these opportunities, you've been presented them, but those opportunities are swept under the carpet because a lot of you forget that. Mm. Uh, and they won't say, like, oh, he's, he's been in the mandatory slot for, you know, like 800 days or something. No, he's not. He's been sat at number one, but that mandatory has not been called and he's just been forgotten about. Mm. He's finally been called and then he got busted for doping and he's been pushed back 12 months. Um, so it, it's one of them with why he, he might well be the fourth love child. I mean, I think there's fights there. I'd like to see the Parker rematch. I think Parker would beat him. Do you? Um, well, yeah, me personally. I mean, look, if Parker had got his arse into gear earlier on in the first fight, he'd have beaten him anyway. Yeah. It was just like a bit of a non-event for Parker until the final two or three rounds. Uh, look, White's going to have to fight again until before the shot. It depends what situation we're going to be in. Um, they had him lined up, I think, to be fighting in June, July. Don't see that happening now, um, because I think it's just going to be too soon for when everything's starting to kick back in. But later down the year, he's going to have to fight him. One thing I will give him credit for, he's not fought a lot of knockovers. Mm. He does get, you know, like, regardless of how big they are, but like your, your Parkers, Chisoras and stuff like that, he could easily fight, you know, just a lot of foreign rubbish with padded records. But he, he does fight at least for competitive. Yeah, but the pay per view was it? The pay per view, them aren't they? Parker and Chisora, they're pay per view mm. fights for no belt. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. Um, but he has to fight again. And I, again, I'll be interested to see the calibre of opponent he's in with. When he, Obviously, as time ticks on, he gets closer to that manager shot then. Yeah, alright then. Uh, moving on then. Where's Callum Smith go now? Uh, well, again, another one. He won the World Boxing, World Boxing Super Series tournament and he, he's just gone into the abyss. Just, no, no one knows about him. Um, I, I mean, look, I, I always thought my mate John Ryder beat him. I felt he was robbed on the cards. I felt John did everything better than Callum Smith that night. And it, it was wrong what happened. And John may never get an opportunity like that again, because you can come back and look, rematches don't always bode well, do they? Um, so yeah, uh, Smido, the, vo Smido, the voice of casual boxing fans, believes that uh, Callum Smith won that fight. Well, I disagree with him there, and I think a lot of people will, will agree with what I'm saying. I think that Smith got beat. Uh, naturally, some people did feel Smith, Smith won, um, I just don't see how I've watched the fight three or four times, scored it uh, with commentary off, um, tried to be as harsh as I can on John and still ended up winning. He made him work, didn't he, John Ryder, didn't he? Didn't let him have any space, did he? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he was uptight and he was on his chest and he was landing shots and look, he bust Smith a couple of times as well. Um, so for me, I, I felt Smith got away with that. And the way Smith, Team Smith and Gallagher and all that lot reacted, they knew they copped, uh, they got lucky, and they were aggressive to media and stuff. Wow, we're not talking about this. We should be talking about Callum Smith, you know. And we Canelo. Champion. Well, hang on, you just had a contentious decision with half the country think, including Smith's hometown, because I think he got, the decision got booed in the arena. Yeah. I think he got beat. They're not just going to ignore it because he's Callum Smith. Who the fuck is Callum Smith, realistically? Well, I heard that, that all them that booed him were all from Essex and that Callum Smith didn't have a fan in there. <laughs> Possibly, I mean, I wasn't there, so I'm not 100% sure. But in terms of what he does next, I mean, look, there's, there's fights available. He's not got the Canelo fight, looks like that's gone to Saunders, but he's got, the, you've got Danny Jacobs, you can have a unification with David Benavides, Caleb Plant. He's made a fortune, has he? Sorry? He's made an absolute fortune. Oh, he has, yeah. And yeah, he's been protected. He's two fights left, something like that. He's made a fortune. The World Boxing Super Series was the best thing that could happen to him from a financial perspective. But he's not he kicked it for a start. I he's mean, not he's kicked on though, has he? He's what? He's not kicked on from that though, has he? No, he's, he's not, no. No, and like I said, 
did he beat? He beat Hassan and Dan. Um, which again, it's just, it's just a nothing side that. A middleweight, an old middleweight. You are. Hassan and Dam is an old middleweight. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, massively. You blew him away. Um, and he's like he's like a jack in a box. You knock you knock him back down, he gets straight back up. He's always up and down because um, he can't hold the shot. Mm. Um, and then obviously he got beat off John, which was one of his mandatory uh, challenges. And I, I'm surprised that's not been reordered, to be honest, because at had John been a bigger name, for example, had John been Danny Jacobs, this would have been reordered by the WBA immediately. But this hasn't, and that's the frustrating thing. I mean, John will fight anybody now. Yeah. Um, and he, he feels like he should be a world champion, and a lot of other people think as well. As for Smith, you, you've got to be looking at unification. If you're not going to get the Canelo fight, you've got to be targeting the unifications, and you've got to be willing to go over to America to fight them. Because... He's not the name over here from where he's going to sell out, you know, like a, an Echo Arena or he's going to sell out Anfield or something like that. Mm. He's going to have to go over there regardless of what he is. And if he doesn't, the fight simply won't happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's exciting times ahead, isn't it, for uh, Callum Smith and John Ryder if they fight? Because yeah, I think massively. John Ryder's a favourite in that. Yeah, massively. I mean, look, no, Smith will go in as the favourite naturally because of the champion but it'll be a lot closer with the bookies than what, uh, what it was previously yeah I make John Fight Ryder a favourite in that fight because they do not want that Southpaw no, as well don't. they don't want it they don't That's and, all. and I feel for John Ryder you they know they don't want that rematch John Ryder were robbed against Rocky Fielding it, John's a couple of John's losses are contentious he beat Rocky Fielding yeah for me and again it was in Liverpool and he's been screwed twice there now yeah. Um, but he keeps going, look, and you can argue that yes, he got beat, but his stock became even higher yeah. because of how controversial it was and the performance he put in. Yeah. So it's not it, naturally, of course, yeah, John would rather have a smaller stock but have a couple of world titles around his waist. But mm. from that, from getting beat and the performance he put in and how contentious it was, and a lot of people felt he won, his stock is probably higher than ever before. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with that. Uh, moving on then, Ozzy, the EIS at Sheffield, uh, it's lottery funded and Eddie Hearn's had the monopoly up there now for 10 years. Do you think that uh, what's going on up there is wrong? In terms of... In terms of, well, match room get the first pick of everybody there, don't they? Their fighters train there. Um, McCracken trains Joshua and he's the head honcho at the EIS. Yeah, Do you think that he needs looking into? Yeah, what, what, I don't, what I don't necessarily agree with is that Joshua is, has all his camps there and things like that and it's a state funded facility. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, look, he, he's earned big dough and stuff like that and I don't think he should be necessarily training at a state funded facility and things like that. As for who gets the cherry pick of the fighters, I'm not, I'm not bothered. Turn over with who you want. Um, Frank Warren's signing a lot more amateur talent now, and the one thing that you can always say for Frank is he knows how to build a fighter and guide them. Uh, and he's having a lot more, you know. He might not have your Team GB stars, but there's sometimes that you've not been on Team GB, but you've beaten you've beaten fighters on the program, yeah. and you're, you're just as good, if not better. Um, it's just easy to build on a profile of Olympic fighters, for example, because they've got the Olympics and a bit of terrestrial TV publicity. Um, let, let them have the pick of the bunch. If you can't promote them, or not every amateur turns over as well, and it's good. Look at Tom Stalker. He was captain, captain of the Olympic team, and he, he was rubbish. Yeah. He just wasn't a professional fighter. It just, his style didn't, he couldn't adapt to it. Yeah. Um, Frankie Gavin, probably one of the most underachieving uh, British fighters going, yeah. could, have, could, have, could have arguably won a world title, but could never get his weight sorted, um, and, and just didn't live the life. Oddly, I Frank, Frankie should have been a 140, mm -hmm. um, and could have certainly pushed on to European world level at 140, but he operated at 147, the seven pound is a big jump. Um, he's not a big guy as it is, uh, and it showed. I mean, he had a great fight with Leonard Bundu in Wolves. Um, I remember watching that. Great fight. And yes, probably, but that was for the European title, that. Um, 
brilliant, brilliant fight, but he fell short, and size probably played a part in it. And had that been down at 140 against a similar level of opponent, his skills would have been more, you know, like, useful, prevalent, uh, he would have had more advantages to his side. Yeah. From the pick of the bunch, it doesn't really affect me. I'm not a promoter. Um, I, I don't have an opinion on it. I mean, we see people turn over all the time. Some of them I've just not heard of. I don't follow the amateur game that much, um, if at all, really. Um, I follow it from when they turn over as pros, and that's all I'll judge them off. Um, mm. I'm not really... Like I said, I don't have an opinion, but I don't agree with that. Joshua, you know, he's trains at a state-funded um, facility for all of his camps and stuff like that until he goes out to America or something like that. That's not right, particularly when it's you know, like government-funded. The point I'm trying to make, though, is Joshua's been, been up there now, right, 10 years. Now, while he's been with Eddie Hearn since 2012, Eddie's been going up there since he signed Carl Frost, so Eddie knows everybody up there. And do you feel that when Eddie's bouncing around up at the EIS, that all these young amateurs who are ready to turn over who are in the Olympic team and the Commonwealth and European teams and that and going for medals, do you think that he might be tapping these guys up and getting to know them and building a relationship? Do you think that McCracken might be saying, Fred Blog, Crack McCracken will be tipping him off who's good and who's dedicated and all that kind of thing? Yeah, but possibly. Look, but he doesn't sign every Olympic, uh, Olympic hopeful, does he? Or Olympian and stuff like that. He doesn't sign them all. Um, so it's one of them, like, if he wants to do that, fine. But it's, it happens at all the gyms. Promoters have got their favourite trainers, and likewise, trainers have got their favourite promoters. Yeah. And you see it all, like, they'll, they'll sign one from one gym and then three will follow stuff like that it's not it's not unheard of that and, and it will never stop and look Frank had it back in the day when he was number one from a promoter's perspective with Sky and he signed um, the Gale and the likes of that yeah. and Burns got it, he's got the monopoly at the moment for signing the Olympians but as I say it's what you do with them after it yeah. you can be judged off you can sign all the hot property in the world but if you can't do anything with it it doesn't really matter yeah alright then uh, we're out of questions, Ozzy. You've been a uh, good guest, or a, as Steve Wellings calls it, a contributor. <laughs> From the panel. Yeah, are you off on your bike now, Ozzy? Um, I'll be off out in about 45 minutes. How far are you going to go? Um, probably do about 35 miles today. 35 mile? Yeah, nice day in it, so I'll get out with my brother on the bikes. Um, and out to Southport from Shirley. Is that how you're going to go to Southport? Yeah, yeah. Is that how far it is to Southport, 35 miles? Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a round trip, that. Oh, it'll yeah. Round trip. Oh, fuck no, I end up at 70 mile in a, a day, I'll be fucked. Smiddo's uh, into his biking, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is, yeah. He's, uh, he's doing well. He's getting better every time he's out now. Yeah, the voice of casual boxing. <laughs> That's what he builds himself as now. <laughs> I think my saying. Pork, pork. All right then, well listen, all the best to you Rosie, thanks for coming on and have a great weekend. All right yeah, my friend. You too, mate. Big shout out to Innovation Alloys as well. <laughs> you piss <-tackers. laughs> All right, cheers mate. All right, no worries. Bye-bye. 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 That was uh, Ozzy Smith, the voice of Chorley Boxing. <laughs> Uh, I think that's about it really, uh, we had a good chat there, we got through 10 questions or about 12 or 15 points, uh, so that's about it, so I'll get this sent and hopefully I'll get it out tomorrow Sunday, so peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing, but I enjoyed that with Ozzy because he doesn't talk, <laughs> peace out. You like that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. 
porkycornermail.com. All right. Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. All right. Don't forget to subscribe. Keep on trucking. <laughs>